Everything seems to be prepared for another capacity test of the QSO 51.2 volt, 230 ampere hour, 11.77 kilowatt hour battery. Guys, welcome back to another video here from the off -grid garage in rainy Australia. I made 17 kilowatt hours today. I think this is the worst result ever since I got the solar upgrade. Anyway, I have fully, fully, fully charged the battery now to 58.2 volts. Um, we are still, we are still charging with 170, 170 milliamps into the battery, and the active balancer is on for the last uh, half an hour. Deviation is down to 14 millivolt, and I don't think it goes any further down. It will take forever otherwise. I think this is good enough now. All cells are over 3.6 volts, in fact, uh, 3.63. And under the first capacity test of this QSO battery, some people have asked if I can repeat this test with a fully calibrated and top balanced battery and see if there's any difference to the first test when we just charge the battery until the BMS turned off with the standard parameters, which I have altered now. Let me show you quickly. So I have changed the cell under voltage protection to 2.5. This was on 2.7 before. And also the pack under voltage protection down to 40 volt, which was on 43.2 or something. So this time we will definitely discharge the battery down to 2.5 volts, regardless if it's pack or cell voltage. And we have also fully charged the battery. I mean, this is really, this is the maximum we can get. If I go a little bit further up, Cell number 16 will turn off the BMS, so then there's no capacity gain anyway. Voltage difference is now 13 millivolt here, so I think this is fully top balanced. And um, the Tesla is ready to charge, to take all the charge the battery can give. Just checking all the cables again here. There's no problem, so we turn off the power supply and turn on the inverter. And of course, we also have to reset our smart chance. Someone was asking if the smart chance actually keeps the data from the last session. Yes, it does. Even if you disconnect it and keep it in the box it came with, it keeps all the information except the state of charge. Okay, reset. Yes. Everything is zeroed out. I turned on the charger and the Tesla. Seventy amps, and we should see forty-five around amps going out of the battery now. So from now on, we are discharging the battery. It is quarter past six. That means uh, five hours, quarter past eleven. It will be a late night show again, guys. And I also, I also want to turn off the balancer again. Because we only want to use this N when we charge and top balance the battery. This is our first ampere hour coming out of the battery. There's another 229 to go. And then we have a quick comparison to the results we had before when we used the standard default settings in the BMS the battery came with and see if we gain any capacity now. Well, I must admit the battery is about five degrees cooler today. It is far cooler today than it was the first time when we did the test. Still the battery temperatures are 28, 28, 28, 27 inside the battery. So perfect temperature for a discharge test. Okay, guys, without further to do, we see us again in five hours. You have a good evening and it is now sped time. It is 11 p.m. and I'm back in the garage watching this stupid battery discharging. Okay, we are down to, um, well, actually, I don't know. I watched the VRM from inside the house and the, the state of charge jumped from 14 to 10 to 8, then back to 11. It was all over the place and now it says we are at 3%, but I'm not sure if this is true or not. But anyway, we have one cell under three volts and this is cell number 16. Hmm. Cell number 16 was also the cell which was the highest and now it's the lowest. 117 millivolt deviation we have but that is fine. We've got a low state of charge alarm which is not reported to Victron. Okay let's have a look in the Victron smart shunt. 
Okay, we have discharged 11.7 kilowatt hours which is 227 ampere hours. Two point, oh, I can hardly read it. 2.858 is cell number 60. 46 volt is our pack voltage and I can hear the fans spinning down of the inverter. It is getting hard to maintain the power. Okay, 11.8 kilowatt hours, 228 ampere hours. This is exactly what we had with the first test when it stopped. But this one is still going but not very far, I think, not very far. Also here quickly something. Our highest voltage cell is 2.9 volts. Our lowest is 2.7 volts. If I have a look in the Victron VRM, go under advanced and have a look in the smart BMS, it reports 3.33 and 3.34 volt as the highest and lowest cell. So that is not consistent okay and then here as well this is our graph for the highest and lowest cell again 3.33 and 3.34 so that is not correct okay we get a cell low voltage alarm as well now because we are under 2.7 i think i said and now the pack low voltage alarm comes along as well we've got three alarms 2.577 0.1 ampere hours missing, come on! <laughs> that is close, yes, we got it. 2.30 ampere hours and we are at 2.518. Any moment, it will turn off. There we go, that's it. And we've got the beeping now. Is there an actual alarm in the VRM? No, there's nothing in the VRM. Hmm. Ah, maybe it takes a while because here we had already a low voltage alarm here i'll show you in the remote console a low voltage alarm and oh this is the low voltage warning and the low voltage alarm which is then the disconnect here's the screenshot before the bms turned off and the smart shunt turned off as well so 11.9 kilowatt hours a bit over the rated capacity of the battery and 230 ampere hours spot on so as you can see, um, before we had 11.8 kilowatt hours, so only 0.1 kilowatt hour more now with optimal settings. So two ampere hours more we got out of this pack and this is less than 1%. So it is not really worth changing these parameters. So it is really squeezing the last drop out of your battery, but it doesn't make a big difference. Okay guys, so far this video from Tonight, capacity testing the QSO battery again with optimal settings as per your request. And who says I'm not able to make short videos, right? Well, actually, while you're here, I can actually, to extend this video a bit here, I can show you the QSO app for a moment, which is called TP Home. And um, I need to go into device, connect to this Bluetooth device which I learned, connect success. And now we have all the warnings down here, 0%. So you can see the battery symbol at the top here. Then we've got our charging MOSFETs, discharging MOSFETs. Anti-theft is disabled, <laughs> wow. Uh, the pack voltage, cell minimum, maximum voltage, temperature 32. Oh yeah, the battery has warmed up to 32 degrees. Look at this, capacity software version so here under runtime we can see um, all these temperatures and voltages in a bit more detail we can click on view battery and it gives us all the battery voltages and under config which i found very interesting is we can actually set a server configuration and also a wi-fi hotspot so you can connect this BMS to your Wi-Fi and then it connects back at a server at QSO. And they are apparently able then to remote into the BMS and um, help you out if something is not working correctly. So this is all not implemented, not working. It is already in the app, they told me, but they are not there yet. But this is how it will be. So I guess this would be one of the first BMS manufacturers which provide you with a remote assistance for their BMS. That is a quite interesting concept. 
Yeah, and this is basically everything the app has to offer at the moment here. So there's not much to do. Um, there is actually... Yeah, if you click on password here at the top, it's asking for a username and password. I tried several methods to get in, um, but it doesn't let me. I think this is where you can actually access your parameters as well then and change them. I'm not sure if the app is not ready yet to do that or if they didn't give me the password to actually log in. Yeah, it's a very basic app, but it has the information you need and it also uh, here under no, under runtime and it also shows you the voltage difference across your battery cells. So yeah, it's quite good for a version 0 0.1.8. <laughs> Okay guys, so far this video from tonight, uh, testing the QSO battery again, once again. I still think it's a decent battery with an okay-ish BMS. Definitely usable and it protects your battery as we can see. Oh, quarter past 11. Guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your support here on the channel. Thanks for all your very generous donations recently. And until the next video guys, you stay charged, stay safe. And thanks again for watching. You have a good night's sleep. Bye-bye.